Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of the Good Girls Get Rich podcast. I'm Karen Yankovich, and I'm so excited to be here with Louisa Havers today. Um, I've been actually on her podcast. We'll talk a little bit about that, and that's how we met within the last year. Um, and recently, Louisa did a free masterclass, what she's calling the Signature Wealth Energetics Masterclass. And who doesn't want that, right? To, who doesn't need a little fine tuning of their wealth energetics? So I took her masterclass, and I loved it so much. I thought, I want to talk about about this and I want you to hear about it too. So let me tell you a minute, a little bit about Louisa. Louisa Havers is an internationally renowned success advisor and creator of the Helix Method, Master Akashic Records channel, Soul Journeys Method. She enables multi six and seven figure entrepreneurs to lift the ceiling in both their lives and businesses. It's a journey Louisa knows works as she's personally undertaken it. Years spent leading change in the highly pressurized and stressful social services sector sector led to shingles and chronic fatigue, compelling her to break free from the corporate matrix of overwork. It was the first step to creating her own life of freedom and making a bigger impact with her dream online business. Louisa enables clients across the globe to activate quantum leaps to success in their own journey of self-actualization and fulfillment. Louisa, I'm so excited for this conversation. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Karen. I'm delighted to be here. And I'm so excited that you came and joined us in the masterclass. As oh, well. it was a it was a lot of fun. And it was it just came at a time where I'm like, I want to I want to check this out. Um, but there's one thing in your bio I want to just talk about first for a second, because it's so interesting, because, you know, I also came from corporate, and you talk a little bit about um, the highly pressurized and stressful sector you were in and the, you know, the, the corporate matrix of overwork. But I actually think that there's also a lot of entrepreneurs that are in that space right now. And I can tell you that as much as I felt overworked in corporate, I don't think I worked as many hours as some of the weeks I've worked as an entrepreneur as ever. I mean, other than, other than rare exceptions, right. Um, as I worked pretty consistently as an entrepreneur. So it's, it's interesting. I'm on a, on a journey to make to, to, for that not to be the case. And I, and it doesn't need to be the case in my business. And it's a big part of what I teach. It's just interesting what we can do to ourselves too. Right. Oh my word, absolutely. And the the corporate matrix of overwork. I when I first became an entrepreneur, I I did bring that overwork with me. <laughs> um, because I was so used to working in that way and really feeling like I needed to hustle really to to have the right. success and was particularly within social services, very used to firefighting. There was a lot of firefighting going on. So having to troubleshoot, being sh sort of thrown in to go and sort something out that, you know, needed resolving instantly. And and there were kind of life and death scenarios in, in that field um, on, you know, on some occasions, not always, of course. Um, and so our nervous systems kind of get used to running on that adrenaline. <laughs> um, and of course, I had my own experience of, of burnout. And I know so many other people who've who, who've had that as well. Um, but I think you're absolutely right. I see it too with many of my clients who are entrepreneurs um, leading very successful businesses who are on that uh, place of, hang on a second, I am on a, an entrepreneurial hamster wheel right. um, of really um, trying to get that balance right so that I've got harmony, I've got peace, I've got quality of life and a successful business and I'm not kind of sacrificing one against the other because that's the thing is is where are where's the misalignment showing up if right. everything's going into our work and of course there are periods at any business where we need to put perhaps a little bit more time into the growth of the business than than other periods but I think it becomes a problem when that's the the, the default point and that's the the norm <laughs> If yeah, that makes sense. It does. When I first started my business, I did the same thing. I took the energy over with me. And then I think I got pretty good at it. But then what I didn't realize was during the pandemic, I went right back to it because what else was there to do, right? So I'd say, okay, I'm going to stop at five o'clock and then it'd be 5.30. And I'm like, well, what do I do? You know, like I'm not really <laughs> one to sit in front of the TV. Let me just go back to my desk and do some more of this, right? And and I didn't realize how much I was getting sucked back into that until, and, and probably for almost a year, right, um, before we really went back to in-person events and, you know, feeling more, at least here in the U.S., going, feeling more comfortable going out to dinner or whatever. But it took me another, you know, good period of time to kind of undo that again. Oh, I totally get that. I, and I think I, that was certainly something I heard from so many people who already had online businesses and were growing their businesses or indeed actually, you know, getting their businesses set up was that 
where's the off switch when you haven't got those um, sort of markers that we would traditionally have with being able, knowing that you're going to go out for dinner with some friends or you're taking the kids somewhere or whatever it might be there'd be some sort of other aspect of social life that would be calling you away from your from your from your desk and that we just we lost that didn't we right, um, right. <laughs> and so for all the workaholics out there um you know <laughs> you know are you going to be are we going to be watching something on Netflix that may not be very good for the soul or are we going to be you know doing something to contribute to our uh, you know our, our, our purpose and our family's well-being and serving clients and all the things so I, I think it I think many people had that experience of realizing that they sort of fell into another working all the time type pattern because right. it felt more fulfilling than sort of just sitting in front of the the, the tv night after night or i had loads of people i i didn't experience this but um might have missed out socially <laughs> but there seemed to be like zoom parties going on with people but people were like drinking a lot on those on those parties and stuff as a as a sort of way of replacing going to the the, the pub culture i guess in in, right. in the uk right um yeah. and that wasn't wasn't going to be good for people's uh well-being i think we'll be i think we'll be dissecting the impact on us of that year for a very very long time right um and I plus agree. we typically i mean hopefully if you're running a business you love what you do right so it's not like a job where you were doing things maybe you did things you loved but also probably a lot of things that you just had to do was your responsibility or other people as you do here we're cre hopefully and i think you know most of the people that listen to the show are creating things that they love to do so it's easy to overwork so tell us a little bit about wealth energetics and and your journey to be to be you know creating the helix method tell us a little bit about what that is and you know what brought you to to doing this piece of it Oh, well, so it, it kind of goes back to that aspect of, you know, how I took my old version of myself to, over from corporate into into the entrepreneurial land. Um, and when I when I looked back, um, so, you know, you mentioned that my background was in, in, in social services. And I remember when I left that I had and I hadn't anticipated this, but I did have. When I look back, I realized it was grief. And what I was grieving was actually the the loss of the identity that I had um, whilst I was working in corporate. Because and then suddenly being like, oh, I've got this sort of free range. Who am I? Like, what is my identity? Such an important statement that you just made. So many people don't understand that shift in identity that they're making when they go from employee to whatever their next step is in their journey. It's really and we've never true. done it before often. So how the heck are we supposed to know how to do it? Exactly. And it was something that I hadn't anticipated that I was going to be sort of hit with. But it, I, it, I really recognized that actually I've got to create my new identity. And really, I've got this kind of freedom to really understand more of who I was because I really had hidden behind the, the the roles of corporate and being really busy, you know, as this this leader in social services and all the things. Um, and of course, it's one of those things, isn't it? That's been such a gift of recognizing that the identity that we have is ultimately how we show up in the world and what we how we create our reality. So that was like a stepping stone for me in terms of kind of going back and drawing on my psychology background to recognizing, oh, hang on a second, I need to kind of really elevate who I am within my own personal development. Um, and what I, I started on a journey of um, really diving into identity work um, alongside the energy healing um, aspect because I discovered that I could feel energy and I would I'm the kind of person I just love studying. I love learning and, and growing. So I'm always, you know, um, studying um, new things um, and uh, really being able to expand my consciousness. And I love to kind of correlate with you know, who's doing what across the, across the piece because so often people are talking about things and they're saying it's some new thing and actually someone else is talking about it over here, but they're just calling it different things. Um, anyway, so my um, passion is 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 studying and I love studying, you know, energetics and psychology and all, all those things. And so as I was um, learning more and more new new things and um, had uh, trained in a number of different modalities and I was experimenting on myself and, and, and working with my clients, I really came to understand that what when things were working really well and when things were working really well, 
um, for, for me, and I was getting into that flow state energetically, was when I was working on the aspects I teach within the Helix Method now, which ultimately is around, which is an energy psychology modality, which is what we do within the Helix Method is balancing that deep inner healing work, that somatic energetic healing work that we need to do so that we're working across all those different levels of consciousness, um, really getting into the depth of how the body holds our experiences alongside manifesting rituals so that we've got that balance of the of the two and that we are not trying just to kind of do one without the other. And for me, when I really brought the two together, that's when I saw the the, the greatest shifts uh, more quickly for myself, being able to stay in those higher frequencies, those elevated frequencies for longer and for my clients too. Because when we're in that flow state and things are going really well, everyone knows that feeling where it's like, oh my God, I don't yes. want to stop. <laughs> and then, yes. And then when you're not in that feeling, it's just, what do I, how do I get back there? You're right. Like when you're in it, you know, you're in it. Yeah. And, and then when you're not in it, it's frustrating. It could be so frustrating. Good. I feel like, right. Cause yeah, because then, then you're sometimes, at least I find then I'm working too hard to get there. And that is the, the last thing I need to be doing to get there. Exactly. Right. So it's yeah it's, it's, it's that when, when it's when we're out of that state and it can be that and our default point is so often for so many people is to go right I've got to work harder to to get to get the momentum going to get things moving but if we're in that space and we're not doing the energy work then our frequency isn't raised and so we're actually trying to kind of push more push matter push things um trying to create from that 3d aspect from the physical plane rather than um, I say allowing our energy to do the heavy lifting for us. Of course, we need to carry on taking action on all the things. And um, what's so beautiful is when we're in that, when we can raise our frequency again and we're like, oh, I can feel it happening. We start to see the synchronicities opening up again. And you're like, yes, I want to stay here. Um, and one of the key aspects that I found that's been really helpful for my clients, and, and I teach this in the in the in the masterclass as well, I'll touch on it in the masterclass, is around helping people understand that. I think it's easy to kind of think of it as like three states of energy that we're in at any one point in time. So we've got that flow state, that state that we all want to be in. It's all, you know, that's where the magic happens. And then we've got resistance energy and reversed energy. And I think it's just a really helpful concept for people to really understand. So the resistance energy is around, you know, these are the limiting beliefs that we have, like from an old identity of us, ourselves that are we're trying to create a, a new version of reality with with these limiting with these beliefs that have become limiting and then we have and that feels like you're trying to push treacle up a hill you know you're kind of making progress but it's like oh this is so sticky um and then we have reversed energy and this is such a game changer for people because um literally your energy is reversed and this can happen when we have uh, experiences along our life path or traumas that um, we haven't healed from and so we're holding those energetic imprints um, in our field and they are weighing us down and uh, taking up some of our energetic space if you like um, that could be more in the flow state and um, and things like you know from a business perspective it can be things like if anyone's faced bankruptcy or cash flow issues that can be very stressful uh, team issues when team members haven't worked out or whether it's sales or you know all the different aspects that we can have within business and indeed aspects that we might have seen with our as growing up as a child with our parents and and uh, the businesses that they had so anywhere there's any reversed energy there that can really have a huge impact on people um, being able to hold that flow state or um, when we're out of it going oh no I feel like I've gone into reverse energy help how do I how do I get out of this and and get back into um, that flow state where we can take action without having to work so so hard you know what that's I I Talk to me, talk a little bit more about that reverse energy, because I think that that's an important piece of this. Because, you know, I can think of a lot of people that I've worked with that they can have, like, they can check the all of the above button, right, to the to the things you mentioned. So, so we know, we know, I guess, I'm going to say that, I'm going to presume this and tell me if I'm wrong. We know when we're in it, when things, when we are, things are just like no matter what we do, they're not landing where we want them to land or whatever, right? But are there ways to to identify that we're slipping into it or and and then, you know, 
I have a hundred questions. We don't have time for that. But is there like, is there, are there things that you, do you have to like uncover it and, and cry about it and, you know, throw some, you know, beat your pillow up or something, or can it be done? Like, it's like, tell us a little bit about identifying it so that we know how to learn from it and we can kind of reverse it. Cause those are also the things that are the things that probably annoy us the most, right? Like I cannot believe, you know, my divorce from that person who is, is still affecting me. You know, I'm so, I feel like I'm so on the other side of it, you know, and I, the last thing I want is that to be still in the way of my success. Right. Exactly. So, so tell us a little bit about how we can, how can we learn a little bit about what those things are, what those triggers might be and how we deal with them? So anyone listening, I'm sure as we're talking about this, people will be thinking of ideas of wondering if that aspect of their life, maybe they've got some reversed energy there. Like and you mentioned divorce as well. That's a huge area that can bring forward, um, create huge energy reversals for people, particularly where there may be, um, you know, toxic, I call it toxic money where, um, you know, the money's separated or there's uh, money being given for maintenance and there's conditions attached to it and all the things. And suddenly we're kind of rejecting money in one area of our life. But then if we're doing that over it, within our relationships over here, where where are we then mirroring it in within our business? Um, and so there it's it's a it's a beautiful thing as people start to do this. So I can I can speak to this because what and I've got a a guide that people can download so it will walk them through how to, how to do this. Um, but ultimately, by identifying it through the, so what we do in the Helix Method, if I just explain that quickly, then people will understand what I'm talking about. Um, so within we'll the link Helix, to the guide. You'll send us a link to the guide. I will send you the okay, link. Okay. Yep. So we'll, you guys, the, you, when you're watching this, just check below. You'll see a link to the guide. Yes. Yeah, so this, you'll be able to do this exactly in your own home. Um, so I invite you to do uh, do a higher self invocation so that you can align your different levels of consciousness, and that really helps you to drop within and increase your life force energy. So your energy fields expanded out. And then what we do is we do um, muscle testing with the sway technique, or I, you can call it energy kinesiology. And the reason why I like the sway technique, um, so for those that don't know it, is you use your body like a dousing device, which as you do it, it enables you to feel the energy. And I, for me, that's very powerful for people to actually be able to feel their body moving typically forwards for a, a yes when you ask your body a question you get a, a yes or a no so forwards is typically a yes backwards is typically a no there's all sorts of other things that go on with with the muscle testing as well but that's kind of a, a good starting point for, for for people right now well i can I, I just want to comment on that i've done muscle testing over the years with different people and I, you know i I am also a student of energetics and identity and I'm always listening to things, but with muscle testing, when we're doing things like this. I know it to be true, but I didn't believe it about myself. I was like, I'm forcing this. I know what I answer I want and I'm forcing it. But when I did your sway thing, I was like, whoa, you know what I mean? I was like, and I got answers I didn't expect. And it was really, it was the first time that I had ever done muscle testing that I really believed in the result of the muscle testing. And I have, you know, I've done this with really smart people. So it, it's not them, it's me, just how, how I just couldn't get that. But for some reason it was that sway that made a difference for me. And, you know, you don't know that until you try the things, right? Somebody else, it might be the, the testing, like, and I'm, when I do this, it's like, you know, is it a yes, you can break through. There's things like that people have done, right? So, but I always like kind of felt like, yeah, yeah. I'm making that happen, you know? But with the swaying, I was getting answers I didn't expect, yeah. which was really cool, which was really cool. Yeah, it, it really is. It's, um, I think it's the most accurate one for people when we're, to because we have to get out of our head to allow the body to sway. And so it's yeah. super powerful. And um, yeah, I absolutely love it. And the sway, when you're doing the sway, when you discover, when you ask a question, you have got an energy reversal to it. You're not going to sway typically forwards, yes or no. Your sway is going to start doing something else. Like you might go around in circles, you might lean to the left or to the right and all sorts of other things go on. And so that's very cool to start to kind of, really feel your body re respond to that so what i invite people to do is to you can simply ask questions like you know have i got an energy reversal to do that's preventing me 
from making 100k this month or you know whatever the amount is that people are wanting to create in the, the, the revenue that they're wanting to create in their in their business and then through a cluster of questions that you can ask you can drill right down to the root of where this energetic reversal has come and the key for me that really starts to open up for people is as you're asking these questions and you're dropped into the your your heart space so that you can allow your body to sway your body is going to start your subconscious is going to start giving you um, somatic responses to the question that you've asked so people might suddenly feel a shooting pain in an area of their body or they might suddenly get a, a memory flash across their mind that like that's weird why am I thinking of my sister doing x y and z it's got nothing to do with this situation no it has because it's just come up come up it's your body's your subconscious is, is is giving you the the resources that you need to up to uncover that next piece so it's really cool to be able to really recognize the somatic responses as, as you're doing that for me that's really key and then once you've identified through the the muscle testing the the, the root then what we do is through the intention and breath work and um, clearing statements help to command that energetic uh, imprint to shift from your energy field um, and then we start to to bring in and create what we really want to create so like weaving a new reality through uh, in you know calling it what we want imprinting successful beliefs thoughts emotions all of the aspects that make up our identity so that we can really start to embody that and hold that frequency for longer does that make sense does that help it does it does make sense. It does make sense. I mean, and I, you know, I, as, as I think, as I mentioned, even just even with the um, muscle testing, it, it's until you experience it and start doing it, you know, it's easy to hear it and process it, but, but you need to do it to start to, to see how it feels on yourself so that you can kind of get a sense of, of, of what's going on. Right. And what, and, and again, things that you don't really expect are in the way of things or maybe the things that are triggering, right? So this led you to create the Helix method. Is that where is that a fair to say? Yes. Okay. So tell us about that. Yes. So the Helix method, we use a range of techniques within the within the Helix method to help people to expand their consciousness and um, to be able to develop their psychic gifts and to be able to really I, I call it the trifecta of prosperity so that you can heal and expand wealth health and and love because those are the three kind of big aspects that people when we've when we're feeling aligned in all those areas of life life feels really good and the ripple effect is is there within our businesses the impact that we're here to make in the world and and across all aspects of our, our life and so over the last few years with the helix method um it started with you know i was working in this way and then i had one of my clients reach out and this is karen talk about synchronicity so i had just had uh, a call with my coach and i'd literally written down you know it was a, a monday night and i'd had a call and i'd written down okay right launch my certification program um starting in september and then i woke up in the morning and there was an email from a client going do you teach people how to do what you do? Because I'm looking, <laughs> I would love it. Of course you did. Of course you did, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, there's a the kind of sign that this is. Yeah, you know, I talk about flow, right? There's, yeah. there's, there's an example of flow. That exactly it. So I was like, whoa, this is amazing, you know. And, uh, and of course, it didn't have a name at that point, you know, because it was just been in, in the sense of how I'd been working with my clients and, um, you know, within our programs and things. And so that started with, um, you know, we launched we launched it as a certification program. And uh, that was a couple of years ago now. So it's been a, a privilege to be teaching other people how to go deeper with their clients by being able to certify in the in the helix method um and and so there's there's many aspects to it because um there's so much that you can do you know the muscle testing the energy kinesiology that we do within the helix method is just a one one of the the cool techniques that that, that we use um alongside the manifesting ritual that i teach within the um within the within the master class that you experienced um but yes, I I absolutely love I love it. I lead with with wealth because I love helping people to heal their 
their, their money storing and, and to expand their wealth consciousness. Um, well, and, is- and wealth does feed some of the other things, right? We can pretend it doesn't, but mm-hmm. you know, even like certainly here in the U S you know, wealth makes a difference in your health. If you, you know, health insurance is expensive. Doctors are not accepting insurance, you know, so having the cash to be able to, 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 you know, to join the gym, take the yoga classes, buy a Peloton, whatever it is that you need to do to stay healthy. Right. So I think, I think that, yeah, I think, and it feeds the other, it feeds, it certainly feeds health. I don't know about love, but it certainly feeds health. Yeah, absolutely. Because also, if you think about what are one of the biggest stresses for people in life that impact their health, it is money, you know, in the sense of um, where where people are, you know, you can have very successful right. businesses go out of business. Right. And that's going to have a huge impact, actually, not only on one person's health, you know, the CEO's health in terms of the stress, possible sleepless nights, their adrenals going out of whack, all those things. But also family relationships and things, because, you know, it when people are feeling stressed, they might not be so peaceful at home right. <laughs> and all those, all those right. things. <laughs> so it does have your, you know, it does have that knock on effect or, um, across, across everybody. And when we're in the flow state and we're feeling really good about money and expanding money and all those things, then we can, we, we feel that, you know, our health uh, is impacted as well. And we can feel really generous in our relationships in terms of time and, uh, and the, the expansion of love that we have as well. Right. Right. So, so the helix method combines modalities for all for that. What, what did you call it? A triangle? Oh, the trifecta of prosperity. Trifecta, the trifecta yes. of prosperity. Okay. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. And do you incorporate that into everything you do or is that a specific program that you teach or both? Yeah, so I actually have, so I've got the the wealth portal, which is where we focus on the money side of things. Then I have the body, the body, a limited edition, I call it, where we focus on health Mm aspects. And then we have the love codes where we focus on the relationship. And then um, we've also got the the certification program for for those that are like, do you know what, I want to go deeper with my clients and to be able to take those programs themselves and, and, and lead their clients their clients through it so we've got a a beautiful pathway for people to to be able to go on the go on the journey um you know uh for that so they can pick pick the components that they want to want want to focus on and and what i found time and time again is as people are changing their energy and, and elevating their consciousness and it's just so beautiful how more intuitive people are um it really awakens that even people who are already really intuitive mm-hmm. um it 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 kind of gets uh, ramped up a gear. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that. So you know, just before we came on here, and I think that that um, I want to make sure we touch on this topic mm-hmm. because I I and and we're definitely going to have you share um, links to the work that you're doing because I know my listeners are going to want to check you out. Um, but we were talking about the fact that you know we're recording this. It's March, the end of March, 2024, and there's a shift this year that I've never seen before in at least the decade or plus that I've been doing this work. And more than ever, I've seen the wealth piece get in the way. Mm-hmm. And meaning that more than ever, I've seen people closing up their businesses and either going back to corporate, taking a job, retiring, whatever. But I don't necessarily think it was a planned, organized thing, right? I think that there were str- we're seeing more and more people struggling, people struggling do I need to do high ticket? Should I be doing low ticket? Are ads working anymore? Right. So there's a shift happening in the market. And I think, you know, the strategies that I teach are really very relationship focused. And I think that still works. So, you know, so we're doubling down on that. Um, but I wanted to mention that because I, I, if you're experiencing this, you're not alone, you know, mm-hmm. and we talked earlier before we turned the camera on that, you know, it was almost like the elephant in the room, right? People are still pretending to be successful or pretending to have this, you know, just pretending to continue to move forward with their businesses, but behind the scenes, it's a little bit of a shit show. And I'm not going to lie. We're, we've changed a lot of things up ourselves because of that. The things we used to do, I, I did a thing this year that I hadn't done in like eight years and it was just a silly little marketing thing. Right. But eight years ago when I did it. I remember, I mean, my list was one tenth the size as it is now. Right. And I remember having stacks of paper on my desk and like going through them saying, all right, who am I doing this with? And who am I not? We had two responses this year, 
You know what I mean? And this is with a list 10 times the size with it. So things are shifting. And mm -hmm. I think as marketers, because I, I certainly am a marketer. I know you're a marketer and many of the people listening to the show are marketers. We need to be paying attention, right? So, so tell me a little bit about what you're seeing about that and the, and you know, from an energetic and also just from a practical standpoint. Oh yes. Huge. I'm definitely seeing that as well. And what I'm, what I'm recognizing is that people are requiring more nurturing before they're saying yes. So the sales cycle is longer, if that makes sense, mm -hmm. um, before people are stepping in. Um, because of either they've had, they've got burnt along the way with perhaps investing in things that haven't delivered. Um, they've got stuff going on in their own business where the cash flow isn't isn't what it was because of this um, extension in, in sales cycle before people are saying, saying yes. The impact of taxes going up, certainly that's been in, in, in the UK. I don't know what's happening elsewhere. In, in the world, whether taxes have been affecting for, for other people in, in the different countries that they're, that they're in. So I think there's a, a number of different uh, squeeze points that are coming in for, for, for business owners. And of course, as creatives, we get, if we're listening to what's going on in the market, then we need to pivot and adapt to be able right. to go and say, okay, hang on, what was working isn't working anymore. So I now need to be able to use this breadth of skills that I've developed and to be able to apply those principles that you teach, Karen, around relationships and apply building relationships because um, in, in, in a new way, because ultimately business comes down to relationships. We work with people that we know, like, and trust. Right. That has stood the test of time right. Um, right. of course we um you know that what the gift of working in 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 the online space is that it, it the we've kind of collapsed the timeline so to speak for being able to get to know like and trust people through video and and all those things and I think what we're seeing is uh, a little caution coming in for for people as they are as the market has um matured and there are more people out there. And also, I think what we're also seeing is um, a portion of people who may have come into the online space whilst they're in the pandemic, recognizing that perhaps it's not for them and closing oh, down. That's true. Yeah. Because if you think of it, it's kind of like, a, where are we, 2024, three years, you know, is, is right, it right. that sort of cycle, isn't it? Of people going, actually, you've grown the business, sod this, this isn't, this isn't for me. Um, so there's kind of those sort of practical aspects of it. And then what I'm recognizing as well from uh, an energetics point of this, all of this is hugely stressful for people who are going through that. Hang on, I'm giving up my business because of whatever the reason is. Mm -hmm. um, if it's cash flow, if it's actually they've realized they've got a business that, you know, didn't give them the freedom that they thought they wanted or, you know, sometimes we try try new aspects in our business and we're like actually it's, it's not it's not for me and that and that's okay but yeah. there will be reversed energy around this for for, for people right. and um and that's for me is being able to help people go right let's clear all the stuff where we're holding some trauma even if we're telling ourselves because we can rationalize can't we um and tell ourselves a really good story about x y and z um, but it's really important to go into the heart and to really recognize, hang on, how is the body experiencing all of this so that you can make sure that we're not taking any of that that trauma into the, whatever the next project is. And if there is cash slow in your business, to be able to, to, to transmute that energy so that you can free the energy up so you can start to allow things to feel easier and to be able to go, okay, do you know what? Um, all paths of success have peaks and troughs that if there is a trough, it's a data point in time. Because the thing I see is we shame on ourselves so much when things aren't in flow rather than saying, Do you know what, the business is just feeling a bit sticky right now and I need to refocus. It's not like it means anything about our self-worth, but mm -hmm. we're very good at when we're in a quiet corner on our own just to start to kind of the nervous system will start running these stories through right. through our consciousness, and then before we know it, we might have, you know, might be believing the thoughts that we're thinking. <laughs> right, right. So, so if I'm listening to this conversation and I'm self-identifying with a lot of the things we've talked about today, um, 
what's the first step to identifying these this um, reverse energetic shift? Yeah. Okay. So I would download my guide so this can this can uh, walk, yeah. walk through it because it will walk through mm-hmm. it step by step. It's all there for you. Um, and then I would identify. Okay. So what's going on in my current reality? What am I seeing? Because it's an inter- internal reflection of how I'm how I'm feeling in inside. Um, and then use that as a starting point. So and it's like, have I got an energy reversal to do with X, Y, Z, whatever the thing is, and um, and to do the sway technique to, to identify it so that you can feel it in your body. That will be super powerful. And then to follow my guidance in the in the uh, in the in the workbook that I'll give you in the guide. Um, so that you can start to change it. And then by all means, come to our next masterclass because I yeah. guide people through it. I'll be there to answer any questions. So I can help you with anything that's kind of feeling sticky. And so we can start to change the energy so that you can start to be like, you know what? I'm feeling like, oh, I feel, feel more relieved. Your your frequency is getting raised and only good things are going to come from come from that. How um, often do you do the masterclass? I do them every six to eight weeks. Okay. Okay, good. It was great. It really was. You really way over delivered in that. It was awesome. Um, I highly recommend everybody register for that. And we'll put all the links to all of this in there. Okay. So in, in, in addition to all of this amazing complimentary stuff that you have out there, how do, how do you work with people? Ah, uh, so I have my group program. So I've got the Wealth Portal, which is our four month uh, wealth energetics um, program. So people come in to expand their wealth consciousness. Um, and our intention is that they have a, a breakthrough in their the money that was coming in within the next, you know, 60 days or or, or less. So that's our, our goal. It's super fun. Um, and so people can, you know, inquire about that to, if they're looking to expand their wealth consciousness. And we've got the the body, which we run sort of once a year. Um, and people can come into that where we really focus on what's going on in the in the body and and uh, for any deep trauma work that people are wanting to to work through. Um, we've got the love codes. We'll be running that in June uh, live, which will be focusing around our relationship with ourselves and a relationship with with others. Um, so perfect if people are wanting to to heal aspects of relationship, whether it's in work or family members or. Um, calling in the one even it could be <laughs> could mm-hmm. be for um, and then of course I work you know I have uh, private clients as well I work one-to-one um, with with clients and we, you know I create bespoke packages for people with my private clients amazing amazing well I love the work that you do and I'm glad that you're in my life and I uh, look forward to seeing what else you've got going in this upcoming year. And I'm a fan and I think you're going to get a lot of new fans this week. So um, thank you so much for being here. If you're listening today and this has resonated with you, then you know what I want, right? I want you to take a quick screenshot of this and share it on your social media. Tag me, tag Louisa, because we will then share it with our audience. And we've mentioned on the show the importance of that building relationships that, you know, people understanding, getting to really know, like, and, t- and, and uh, know, like, and trust you. And a lot of that comes from this, right? Like if you met Louisa somewhere, I don't know, on the street, you may not you may be, and she said, she told you some of this stuff. You might be like, okay, but I, you know, hopefully you know, like, and trust me because you're listening. I'm asking you to know, like, and trust her. So this is how we all lift each other up. And this is how we all start to get through whatever's energetically going on this year or whatever's changing in marketing, right? It's just shifts in marketing. And honestly, that's why I do what I do because I feel like what we teach here and she's linked up and Karen Yankovich land is good old fashioned marketing. It's worked for a hundred years. It's going to work for another hundred years. It's not algorithm dependent um, Mm. or anything like that. Right. So, so when you share this, this is how we all support each other and how we all get to move, to move forward. If you want to know more about what it looks like to work with us, there's links on uh, this page as well, or go to karenyankovich.com slash call, book a call on our calendar, and we can talk about what it looks like um, to get some support with some of your LinkedIn and PR strategies so that you know how to start to build these relationships, right? That good old fashioned marketing stuff that works. And it's not spam your network, I promise you. It's not spam your network, it is get to know people right? And in a micro targeted way. So just like I got to know Louisa over this year. So um, I look forward to seeing what's next in the, in our future, Louisa. I think there's more to come and um, thank you so much for being here today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's been a real treat and I'm so excited to connect with everybody as well. So thank you. Looking forward to meeting, meeting everyone. Okay. So we'll see you back here again next week for another episode.